this is about a larger systemic change about the kind of system we operate in. I believe that this is the moment that we need democracy more than ever. We need more people of all types of backgrounds to step up and offer their expertise to solve the challenges in each of our communities. Let's do what we know to be the right thing and be true to that inner voice. I didn't ask to be treated differently, but I'm gonna take it on because I have a job to do and nothing's gonna get in my way of doing that. Go get yourself a political home. You know, Vote and Lead would love to be that home. Black Voters Matter would love to mm -hmm. be that home for you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for leading and running as you are. And I have your back. For that uh, as I was listening to the bio stuff I'm like "Ooh, I've lived many years <laughs> stop <laughs> um, but it's so good and always good to be in conversation and be in community with the vote run lead family and uh, you know, I also, as Aaron uh, was very impacted uh, by Dr. Parks's uh, referencing of the de-escalation excitement around de-escalation training, I actually, I, <laughs> I got goosebumps and was starting to think about, you know, if that story were to be told or to be a part of the conversation that is uh, happening uh, right now around police reform, uh, how different uh, that the conversation uh, could be, but uh, just so much helpful information. I'm also still both uh, warm from uh, my fellow board member, Vanessa Cooksey's reimagining exercise. Uh, and uh, while I'm warm, I'm now also more committed than ever before, never to be in a space where I don't feel safe and welcome. That was so good. And I think that is just what I love. Um, so much about Vote Run Lead that even as a founding board member and a national trainer and uh, I do media coaching for several women uh, candidates who are running now, every time I'm in a Vote Run Lead space, I learn something and uh, it, it's palpable. Uh, so I, I look forward to uh, learning more from y'all uh, uh, as we go through this discussion on you know, how I can be a better communicator myself on, on these critical issues. Next slide. Next slide. Awesome, as we are getting to um, the next slide, I just wanted to uh, do a quick overview of what, uh, we want to chat about and uh, also um, do a little bit of uh, interactive uh, training uh, so that folks can leave uh, with uh, you know, somewhat of a path and, and some tools in which to uh, put some messages together to have this very important conversation uh, with our uh, individual voters in our communities uh, and our communities as a whole. Uh, as uh, uh, Aaron mentioned there is an, an incredible new poll out uh, from uh, the collective PAC and uh, an organization called Run for Something uh, that uh, looks at uh, you know in depth uh, attitudes uh, towards uh, police reform and uh, I think that is going to be linked yes into the uh, chat box you can take a look at all of the uh, the findings there. I want to just pull out some of the things that were really surprising uh, to me, and I, I think also will will uh, give some clarity on a, a path forward uh, for language um, and message guidance. And then you know we want to talk uh, real specifically and again interactively about why shared values are key to effective communication. Um, one of the things that uh, I'm not sure if it was uh, in uh, uh, those many years of uh, things <laughs> in the intro is that for the last 10 years, um, I have been a Fox News um, contributor. I am a black woman. I am an unapologetic progressive. And I have gone on to um, Fox News to defend 
my beliefs and progressive values and, and policies uh, for now uh, a decade and uh, have some things to share about uh, uh, how you can use shared values to connect with the, uh, the audience and why it's so important. And then we want to do uh, some very quick uh, shared value exercises. So let's, let's look at this poll. It was conducted by Cornell Belcher, who is the, uh, um, I think <laughs> one of like the only um, African-American male uh, national pollsters. He was President Obama's uh, first pollster. And as I was reading this uh, again a few days ago, just uh, some, some of the findings that really stuck out. Uh, so just going through these, uh, now with all of the uh, activity and uh, huge steps forward that uh, even we saw outlined in Colorado, uh, social change, social justice happening at an expedited rate, uh, we're seeing uh, through this poll that a plurality of uh, the people polled strongly approved of their local police department's job performance. That was surprising to me, you know, kind of based on all of the noise that's swirling around. And at the same time, and I, I think this is kind of the, <laughs> the paradox we're, we're living in, is Black Lives Matter, uh, the, the organization, the, the brand uh, coming out of uh, uh, Michael Brown's death in uh, Ferguson, uh, is viewed incredibly favorably by voters. Uh, and I don't think uh, anyone could have imagined that uh, before the most recent murders of um, unarmed uh, people of color by police. Other findings from the poll, majorities of white voters now are seeing racial and ethnic discrimination as a big problem in the United States. That's a, that's a huge shift uh, from where we were just months ago. And corruption, police reforms, job training, and education are issues that voters actually want now candidates to be focused on. I, I, I don't know the um, specific numbers from uh, the poll or from previous polls, but anecdotally, I'm saying I think that has, has probably more than doubled. <laughs> uh, this was not a priority just a short time ago um, as far as what voters wanted uh, lawmakers to be most focused on. And they also, in this poll, tested some very specific messaging. One of uh, the messages that absolutely did not have um, wide appeal was defunding the police. And if you think about probably what you're hearing in the um, news cycle, in the uh, narrative that has uh, captured uh, uh, the attention of you know people who put news content out there's a lot of focus around defunding the police and at the same time there is uh you know a lot of uh messaging and activism going on from organizers in the street uh really pushing the defunding the police message and uh, another key finding reallocating police department funding is is extremely popular uh, with the voters that were polled. Uh, some of the other things that I just want to point to uh, from this poll, there's definitely a mixed approval of the performance of elected officials. You know, the more local you get, the more approval uh, voters uh, are having for their elected officials. Um, we're seeing that white voters are beginning to understand their privilege. Uh, a majority of white voters believe that police treat white people better than black people, a majority. And, uh, you know, back to the defunding the police not having wide appeal, right underneath that is that even black voters are di divided on that issue. Uh, so it, it is not a, a hard demographic split. Um, you know, this, this is comprehensive uh, across demographics. Uh, also, the, something that's unpopular, abolishing the police uh, is unpopular, uh, but key groups strongly approve most police reform policy proposals that don't include the abolishing police, don't include the defunding the police messaging. Uh, another message we've probably heard a lot of is that, that uh, about demilitarizing 
demilitarizing the police. That is a, a, another message that uh, is not a priority with voters. But what is a priority uh, and something that uh, they responded well to is mental health services, K through 12 public education and drug addiction are ways they see funds from police departments uh, being reallocated. Uh, or ways that they support uh, those funds from police departments being reallocated. And so just want to uh, sit with that for a second and ask, you know, what, what does this mean? <laughs> uh, you know, there, uh, there's a lot of uh, surprising information and I, I definitely recommend everyone uh, Pour yourself a cup of tea, <laughs> look through the poll, um, you know, much props to uh, the collective pack and run for something, the work that they're doing uh, uh, to identify uh, these themes. Uh, but, you know, for me, when I was, when I was going through uh, the key findings and reading the executive summary, my takeaways were that at a minimum, uh, there's a uh, confusion around what the term defund the police means. I, I think it was uh, State Representative Herod who, uh, you know, I just have to say, I had been receiving her uh, emails for um, months during COVID. And I don't live in Denver, but she makes me feel safe and warm. <laughs> And uh, that is really important during a pandemic. Uh, but so coming out of that, I, there's confusion around defund the police, that clearly voters need more clarity on details of police reform. What does it mean? They, they, they don't understand the definitions. Uh, any other thoughts that folks have on kind of their takeaways, immediate takeaways? There's a, a good question, does, does not defund equal reallocation? Well, uh, that, that's exactly what we wanna talk about. You know, what, what is the definition of defund to you as a candidate versus what is the voter hear and believe and think when they hear defund? Uh, if we go into a conversation assuming that everyone has the same definitions, then we are, uh, not going to be successful uh, in our communications. Uh, um, any other thoughts coming from the key findings? Um, certainly look through that. Moving on to, let's try to make sense of this from uh, creating language and messaging around it. So what I have learned at Fox um, as a progressive on Fox News, as a woman on Fox News, as a black woman on Fox News, is that I'm not in the circle. <laughs> uh, when I first come on, I'm talking to an audience that uh, doesn't know me uh, or doesn't immediately uh, identify or associate or support me. And thinking back to the reimagining exercise, imagine for a second you had the choice to vote for a candidate who made you feel safe and warm, and that candidate had different policy focus than you did, or a candidate that you didn't feel safe and warm with, but agreed with all of your policies. In many ways, you're gonna vote for the candidate that makes you feel safe and warm. And so stri strictly from a brain science standpoint, we are, we are attracted to trust as individuals, uh, as an audience, uh, as voters, we are attracted to supporting um, the, the people who make us feel safe and warm, the people who make us feel trusted. And so that's one of the goals we want to accomplish with the words as, as we uh, develop messaging around this. Other reason why shared values are so key to effective communication, seismic changes are underway. Everything is shifting under our feet. There's a pandemic, there's this uprising, we already were getting millions of messages a day on our screens in every single way in our life that you can imagine. And it is hard to make sense of it all. We are all as a family, you know, experts on the issues we care about, but it's hard for our voters and their kids and their lives and their bills and, and their uh, multiple foci that they have to um, invest in. Uh, so with, because of those seismic changes, we need to 
uh, do a better job of finding ways of immediately connecting with voters immediately or quick, more quickly establishing that trust. Uh, there were some things Aaron said uh, at the top of the conversation around uh, communities really looking for leadership that makes them feel heard, um, looking for leaders that are, that are listening to them. And this opportunity, as far as how we communicate around police reform, is an excellent opportunity to show that you as a leader value listening, that you as a leader, uh, you know, value the same issues that they value, to show them through your actions, through the words around um, how you frame these messages. Um, so uh, I know we are right at 1.30. Do we, how many minutes do I have? Five minutes, okay. I'm sorry to be running a little bit over. Uh, There's just so much powerful stuff in, in the previous uh, conversations. Uh, and just to go quickly through, an, what are examples of shared values? When I, I you know, it's in the agenda, we're talking about what are, what are shared values? Um, I'll throw one out. Um, having been around a lot of uh, conservatives at Fox News, there's a shared value they'd use very well in communication and it's fear. And it's very powerful and it's immediately connecting. If I'm afraid of something you're afraid of, then you are my pal. Uh, other shared values in, in the uh, chat box, if uh, you wanna uh, chime in. Um, uh, you know, one that I use a lot is uh, the idea of embracing resiliency. Uh, you know, people really respond to resilient people. There's no expectation of being perfect. Uh, everyone knows that as an individual, we're not perfect, but you know, someone who has gotten through those imperfections, have overcome challenges, really is a shared value that uh, uh, voters, Americans, our broader community uh, connect with. Um, so moving on to a very quick shared values exercise, Thinking about the conversations we will be having with individuals and, uh, you know, perhaps even in a candidate forum uh, with your community uh, and all of the different ways those key findings kind of indicated one thing on one side and then another uh, idea or set of positions on the other side. Uh, one, one recommendation I would have is asking questions. So let's in the chat box put some questions out to ask questions that get at those feelings, those attitudes that uh, the poll uncovered. And uh, uh, by asking questions, you are showing your leadership because you're showing that you're someone who values listening. Um, you are showing that uh, you value their opinion and they are connecting with you because they will feel heard, um, seeing some other shared values pop up. Um, uh, I'll throw out an example of a question. Uh, in a candidate forum, uh, as you're having a conversation on police reform, as a leader who will be making decisions, instead of having the answer and assuming everyone is on the same definition as you, uh, there's an easy way of saying, if elected to city council, the questions I will be asking, followed by what those questions are. The questions I will be asking of our police department, the questions I will be asking of our community, the questions I will be asking shows that you are saying to the voter that you are giving them space in the middle of a pandemic, in the middle of an uprising, you're giving them as voters a chance to be heard. Um, another question that has come up here in the chat room, oh, uh, I think that's uh, Amanda um, quoting me. Um, what, what, what are some other questions that we could ask to illuminate our positions on police reform? What is being done well? And that is, such a, that is such a good question because it's important to understand where the community 
feel where their attitudes are. Again, uh, the attitudes change based the more local you get. There's overwhelming support for uh, by a majority of people, you know, for their local police departments. So allowing them to to communicate what is what is being done well. How do you want your neighbors to be treated? Uh, another great question in the immigration reform uh, conversation that we did um, uh, for Define American. All we did was ask questions. What would you do if your son's best friend was undocumented. Uh, it really makes people start to question uh, their actions when it, when it personalizes them. Um, so just to wrap up, I, I know that we are uh, uh, basically out of time. I, I wanted to share one other uh, kind of strategy when going into an interview, when going into a conversation with a, a, a group of people, a lot of times uh, as women, we want to do listing. Uh, we want to put our policies out there. We want to put the facts. We want to put the figures. We want to put the answers. We want to uh, put all of our qualifying ingredients <laughs> on the table first. And uh, as a progressive on Fox News, one thing I've learned is that the first thing I have to do is I have to get in the circle. I can't start with the facts and the policies. Um, and so even if the, the questions, kind of the samples of questions we just went over, if that's your way of getting in the circle, do that first. The order of your messaging is more important at times than what your message is. Get in the circle first. Show them that you are like them. Create that bond of trust. Then follow up. When you're in the circle, having proved you're one of them, follow that up with, all, with your proof points, with your positions, with your policies. And then this is where it gets fun from a communication standpoint. After you've laid down all that you have to offer, all of your ideas, that's when you kick your opponent out of the circle. If you go into your communication with um, uh, individual voters, uh, with your community, knowing get in the circle first, follow up with your proof points and kick your opponent out of that circle. You win every time. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Vote Run Lead, for such a great, incredible space.